We've been hearing about agents a lot, more specifically LLM agents. And there's just so much confusion in the market currently as to how an agent is different from an LLM. And what's even the benefit of having an agent? Weren't LLMs enough? Weren't they already powerful enough to be able to generate consistent and accurate results? Well, in this video, we're about to find out. The reason I'm creating this video is because I have some projects coming up for you guys and they'll use LLM agents. And it just doesn't make sense to make those videos unless I have given you a fundamental understanding of what agents are. So this video will be part of the LLM concepts playlist on my channel, where you have all the concepts required to build LLM based projects. And all the hands on projects are in a separate playlist called the LLM projects playlist. Make sure you check out both of these. Okay, so now let's talk about LLM agents. So LLMs were originally built with the transformer architecture. And since then, the model architectures are getting better and better. And there have been multiple new architectures like Mamba, Griffin, and so on. And the reason for all this innovation is that we basically want better results with the same processing power. And that's the whole idea behind all this research that's happening in this field because companies still feel that LLMs are not accurate enough and can hallucinate quite a bit. Now, there are multiple ways to enhance accuracy and reduce hallucination. And just a side note, please keep in mind that these are two completely parallel fields of research. And while they are interdependent, these are two different specializations. But just for simplicity in this video, I'm going to say these two terms together, accuracy and reduced hallucination, because my job is to read a lot of research papers and make this stuff extremely simple for you guys to understand. But please remember, these are two different fields. Okay, so like I was saying, there are multiple ways to enhance accuracy and reduce hallucination. And these are using better data sets to train the LLMs, training the LLMs on bigger data sets, using more parameters and weights in the model, better architectures. And these are just some of the ways. There are literally a thousand ways to do this. And LLM agents can be thought of as one very different way to achieve this result. It's different because you don't have to do any of the above things, which are kind of resource intensive. And agents provide you a much cheaper, easier, and more effective way to get the same results. So in a way, you can say that LLM agents have a very interesting and different take. Anyway, there are actually two ways to look at agents. The first way is to think of them as a way to get way more accurate output using the same LLMs. And this happens because using agents, you can basically get multiple instances of the same LLM to interact with each other. Let's take the example of a multi-agent collaborative workflow that helps in creating an advertisement. The first agent will do the research for the advertisement, like who is the target audience, the research about the product, and the research about the competition. And another agent will write the copy and the script for the ad. And yet another agent will think of visuals for the ad, and the final agent will create the video. Now, a very interesting thing that people totally miss here is that you can have completely different LLMs powering each agent. And we can select LLMs based on their strengths, meaning what type of data they've been trained on and what type of result they're most accurate at producing. For example, I can use an agent powered by GPT-4 for writing the script of this ad. I can use an agent powered by Llama 3 for researching the competition for this ad and an agent powered by Stability Diffusion for the visuals. And finally, an agent that's powered by LoRa for the video generation. The best part is these agents talk to each other and hand off tasks to each other based on the process. They ideally communicate using message streams. What we've just seen is a multi-LLM, multi-agent collaborative workflow, meaning different agents powered by different LLMs working together to produce a great result. But we can also have single LLM agent workflows as well. And these are obviously much easier to set up. Think of GPT assistants. So if you build assistants on the OpenAI dashboard, they're all powered by GPT models. All right, so now just to reinforce this concept we've learned and to understand more use cases for agents, let's look at another example a software engineering agentic workflow, which is literally the most common use case that people have found. And it's really weird because we as software engineers always end up using the most cutting edge technologies first in our own use cases because those are easy for us to understand. But what ends up happening is we end up replacing ourselves. Anyway, this is not a philosophy video, so let's get back. So in our software engineering agentic workflow, we can have different agents that specialize in different tasks around software engineering. First agent, 
will be a product manager. The second one will be a designer. Third one will be the front end engineer. Fourth will be the back end engineer. Fifth will be DevOps. Sixth will be the QA agent. Now we can also have multiple QA agents, meaning one agent looking at the work of another and so on. This leads to a very accurate final result. At the same time, we can build feedback loops, meaning the designs can go from the designer agent to product manager multiple times for review. And they can even be a senior, more advanced agent that does code review. The final output from QA can again go to the product manager for a final sign off and so on. Now think of getting an output from a single LLM as opposed to the output from multi LLM agent workflow. Now logically, the multi LLM agent workflow output should be much better, right? And that's exactly the case in practice. This is what actually happens. And this is why we use agents. The second way to think about agents is to think of them as LLMs that can actually perform a task because LLMs are great at just replying and giving you answers. So how about we just take this a step further and we use agents to get LLMs to perform tasks for us. Meaning these agents are connected to the internet and perform a task intelligently on the behalf of a human. For example, one agent can read and reply to emails. Another can help you book cheaper tickets online. Another can help you book hotels. And these are the type of agents that are actually quite popular in consumer products. If you've heard about the Rabbit R1, this is exactly what's happening in the background. The main difference with these type of agents is that they need a very narrow focus area since they just need to be good at a very narrow thing. Compare an agent that just books cheaper flights to an agent that is a back-end software engineer. Huge difference, right? Because to be able to write back in code, you need the model to be trained on huge data sets, which is not the case for the task completion agent. And this is also a reason why task completion agents can run on consumer devices like a handheld device, and they don't need a full blown GPU. And these are the two different contexts that people are discussing agents in. Even though these two types appear quite similar, I'm sure now you understand the subtle differences and would now know exactly what type of agents you want to use depending on your use case. Now, I'm not a big fan of textbook definitions, especially for cutting edge tech, because I believe that tech is changing really quickly. So there's no point in trying to define something very strictly, but I feel it's still important for us to take a look at the textbook definition of agents. So here's what it says. It says an LLM agent is a system capable of perceiving its environment, making decisions and taking actions to achieve specific goals. These agents utilize the language models capabilities to perform tasks and interact with users or other systems. And if you think about it, this closely matches the second category of agents that we just saw recently. There are some more concepts around agents that some research papers mention that are important to talk about. And these concepts basically help agents perform better. Number one, perma context. So in multi agent workflows, the context gets passed around, meaning even if there are five agents that are doing different tasks in a software engineering workflow, they still share context and are working towards a common goal. So you can say the context is permanent. And even if you look at an agent in isolation, like a backend development engineer agent, it's always a backend development engineer agent. So it's permanently following that context. Memory. So memory is for facilitating contextual understanding and retention of information over time. Almost like how memory works in humans or even in computer systems in general. So think of LLMs now having memory with the help of agents to enable them to remember what tasks they are performing and the tasks also done in the past so that they can maintain continuity. Now, there are three types of memories, short term memory, which serves as a dynamic repository of the agent's current actions and thoughts akin to its train of thought. As it endeavors to respond to a user's query in real time, it allows the agent to maintain a contextual understanding of the ongoing interaction, enabling seamless and coherent communication. Then we have long term memory, which acts as a comprehensive logbook, chronicling the agent's interactions with users over an extended period of time spanning weeks or even months. It captures the history of conversations, preserving valuable context and insights gleaned from past exchanges. This repository of knowledge enhances the agent's ability to provide personalized and informed responses, drawing upon past experiences to enrich its interactions with users. 
and hybrid memory, which combines the advantages of both short-term and long-term memory to enhance the agent's cognitive abilities. Now, if you notice, I've used some really heavy words in this memory section, and that's because I've taken this text for the short-term memory, long-term memory, and hybrid memory exactly out of the research paper so that there is no confusion and ambiguity around any of these three terms, okay? Uh, anyway, so short-term memory ensures that the agent can quickly access and manipulate recent data and maintaining context within a conversation or task. Long-term memory expands the agent's knowledge base by storing past interactions, learned patterns, and domain-specific information, enabling it to provide more informed responses and make better decisions over time. All right. So now we have the third part, which is planning abilities. Now, full disclosure, this is a huge topic of research at the moment. And it's said that we will know when we hit AGI or artificial general intelligence, when our LLMs have superior planning abilities. Planning is defined as a systematic process by which an LLM analyzes user inquiries, gathers relevant information, and strategizes its actions to provide optimal recommendations or solutions. And now with agents, it's actually easy to get this done because of context and memory, and it's possible to achieve a bit of planning. Now, this is definitely not AGI level of planning, but it's still good enough to perform significantly complex tasks. The fourth is autonomy. Now, we don't have true autonomy until we hit AGI, of course, but with agents, you're able to get something called as shallow autonomy, meaning agents have properties that can appear as autonomy even though they don't have true autonomy. And this happens due to two different things, repetition and interaction. Repetition means that since agents specialize in narrow tasks only, and they're given the same types of tasks again and again, they get really good at performing those same tasks even without the supervisor, which is the human being. And this can lead to a sense of autonomy. The second one, which is interaction, means that since agents are always talking to each other and communicating, they can share feedback and keep refining tasks and hence leading to shallow autonomy. There is another third way of achieving this shallow autonomy and that's by placing an agent whose job is to supervise. If you remember our example of software engineering agent workflow, in that example, our product manager agent was a supervisor agent and it does the job of what the human being was going to do. Now, I want to take you through what I think is one of the most important research papers recently on this topic, and it's titled More Agents is All You Need. Now, this paper is important because it builds up on many previous research papers that are referenced here. It says the performance of large language models scales with the number of agents instantiated. Interesting, right? Check out the highlighted text. Although large language models demonstrate remarkable capabilities in a variety of applications, such as language generation, understanding, and reasoning, they struggle to provide accurate answers when faced with complicated tasks. In these works, multiple LLM agents are used to improve the performance of LLMs. For instance, LLM debate employs multiple LLM agents in a debate form. The reasoning performance is improved by creating a framework that allows more than one agent to debate the final answer of arithmetic tasks. They show performance improvements compared to using one single agent. The paper also mentions that the result of the experiments done in the paper indicates that LLM performance can generally be improved by increasing the ensemble size, i.e. the number of agents across a wide range of tasks. This research paper is just a very interesting read about how scaling up of sampling and voting with the agents can lead to highly accurate results. I'll drop a link to this paper in the description of this video. Now, this video can go on and on, and there are a lot of details around agents, but I feel like you know enough now to be able to build projects with agents. Always remember that developers and engineers don't need to get into details of everything to be able to build stuff. Only if you're a researcher, you need to get into the depth of things. Otherwise, more information might not add much value to you if you just want to build stuff. Since I have to research new LLMs for my firm Armor, I have to be on the research side of things while also being an engineer. Now, this is the only reason I'm reading all these research papers. Anyway, but now you know quite a bit about agents. And now when we build projects, you will learn a lot more. Don't forget to check out my AI plus Golang course where we built six real world production level applications. And in 2024, if you're looking to get a new job or a salary hike, that's a perfect set of projects to add to your portfolio. Do join our Discord where we all hang out and talk about tech, jobs, and sometimes philosophy. Now, a quick word about the sponsors of this video, which is you. Yes, you're the sponsor of this video. Now, I haven't taken up any partnership or sponsorship on this channel yet because YouTube isn't my full-time job. So I can make videos that I actually like and that actually help you. Even if I'll accept any sponsorship in the future, they will be technologies that I really believe in. Now, the way you can support this channel is to subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends because no matter how good this content is, since this channel is really small, it won't get served that easily. So if you feel like you have friends that can really benefit from this content, feel free to share this with them. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.